yeah, that's why I started shaping out of necessity to have something that someone didn't want to make you. And it just, you know, you don't have to ask a favor of a shaper. You just got to figure out how to do it with your own hands. And that's what really got me hooked is just if I get good enough at this to do exactly what I'm thinking, like, where could that take my surfing? And I don't know. I think it just feels natural to make yourself a surfboard. Yeah, you look at a blank, see if you can, what you could get out of it and you kind of see the finished board already in it. It's always just a constant learning process. Um, you're always learning new tricks and stuff, so it's always exciting and just never ending, really. I shaped my first surfboard four years ago, I think, maybe? Something like that, I can't quite remember. Um, when I was 10 and I wanted a new surfboard, but my dad wouldn't buy me one, and so I had to make one. <laughs> like a five, nine single fin. It was sick, yeah, it was so much fun. Super edgy, if you looked at it, it would look like it was definitely a first board and sketchy, but it was really fun. I shaped my first surfboard when I was like 16 years old. I had a blank and I went to the kitchen and got some kitchen tools and started shaping it with a cheese grater. Uh, the first board I shaped was a 9.5 longboard. Yeah, the, the first board I built, I enjoyed building it more than I liked riding it. So as soon as I was done with it and tried it, I wanted to just get back in the bay and make another one right away. Probably when I was like first got into surfing, I just was instantly drawn to board design because I like to draw. So I'd just like draw surfboards. The first surfboard I made was a five, six, single fin, round tail, egg. I think I was 14. And my ninth board was the first board that I was like, oh, like it feels symmetrical. It looks sharp and symmetrical. The first all of them, they're just so weird. And it's awkward holding the planer and everything's just brand new to you still. So after you're 50 or 60, you start to get used to it. There's definitely a huge learning curve getting used to the tools, like the planer and stuff. Once you master the tools a little bit, then it's way, way more endless. Then it's just all about how you're thinking about boards and what, what you want to make. Yeah, I made a 5.5 five little ASIM Twinser. It has two little fins in front of the twin fin that are pretty splayed out. That fin setup is kind of like a new feeling for me. I guess, I haven't really done too many of them. A couple that I've made seem to work pretty good and give you like a nice drawn out connected feeling on a wave. So pretty excited about it. I hope it works.
you doing an old school fish or are you doing? I'm gonna do a ASIM fish with the old school normal template on the toe side and then a side cut one on the heel side. Because I really like the way the side cut thing engages like backside bottom turns and front side off the top. So like it has like a real snappiness, but sometimes it's too skinny. You don't want it on your on the toes, yeah. I actually used to, I was taught to like watch the blade. So I'll usually yeah. go. Kind of like smoothly try to wrap it. As you progress as a shaper, you start to follow the rules more. You start to, I feel like what uh, old shapers teach you are like rules or guidelines or little things that are, you know, quote unquote correct. So you start to pay attention to those things as you start to be familiar with more of those sort of rules. And so I think as it, like at the beginning of shaping, like your first couple goes at it and stuff, just how screwed up the voids are your, your surfing is really unique on those things and i think it's kind of a, a time that you can't reproduce i've never met anyone who's shaped like 10,000 voids and still shapes like they shaped in their first hundred like it's just natural you're going to change the way you do it the best times are when you're just lost in it and it's just like it's all your consciousness so it is like a meditation like that's my favorite time of shaping is when there's not any disruption what's what you're it's just like that's all there is, you know. The board personality is just like a little portrait of yourself, I guess. Every board's gonna come out different from a different shaper. Everyone just has their own ideas and their own concept of surfing, and that translates into their surfboards and where they surf. I still don't think I can make a board as good as Mayhem, obviously, or anyone, but uh, the whole thing is just making a board yourself and going out there with no expectations and trying your best to make what you made work. The board I made on this trip has very little rocker. It's really flat and it's a couple inter inches shorter than my normal board. It's about five, five or six. A squash tail that goes into a swallowtail combination thing. It's got a, a beak nose on it to sort of hide the volume in the nose. I guess generally mine have uh, pretty much no rocker in them. I tend to cut the rocker off because if everything else sucks on the board, with no rocker, you're going to go fast. I don't know, I feel like everyone who doesn't make their own board is kind of set back to a point where when you shape your own board you can, I don't know, you know everything that's going on while you're surfing. It takes a lot of the mystery out. Yeah, I mean it's made it so much more dynamic because I'm like always problem solving when I'm surfing, you know, you're riding something that's new that you're trying to like break down and figure out you know, what went right, what went wrong, what I want to incorporate into my next board and what I want to change about it and it's a lot more just interaction between you and the board and plus the interaction that is with nature and and all that it just seems like something fun to do and you could fine-tune it and like the gear the wheels are always spinning it's always really exciting to 
be trying something different and trying to break it up and figure it out. It is nice to be able to to do that for yourself and it seems pretty natural and follows your passion of surfing. I think that's why everyone here gets along so well. Everyone <laughs> loves surfing so much they make themselves surfboards. <laughs> oh nice. Sick. It's done. Nice. Thing looks mean. Under the arm. Feels good. Yeah, it still feels fishy. I feel like the nose got pulled in. I thought about doing that kind of bottom, like a little more panelly. Oh yeah. On the toe side, do you think it'd be nice with just the twin? The that panel thing would work sick with your um, with the squid, with the squid and yeah. just destroy it right there, like early finish style. Usually when you make boards, you always have a spot in mind or just a different shape that you normally ride at a certain spot. And so <clears throat> when you make your own boards, you, you just feel that like in the board and in your surfing and so it's more honed in. Yeah, basically the board that I made here is, it's gonna be a twin fin and they're kind of like um, birches, ones that you have with those like squiggle hips. <laughs> They're like 5'4", twin fin, really fun. I've always wanted to get one and have that chance, and so we got to meet up, and I was like, dude, show me how to shape one of those, and those guys all helped, you know, like Pickle and Birch and everybody that was in there just give you um, tips and pointers, and, which makes it even more fun, because you do it with your friends, you know, and just learning from them, which is easy. I think the mass produced boards, I think it creates this nice paradox of, okay, you can get a factory plastic packaged board basically or whatever, or you can source something else out that um, it's like a nice counterpoint, you know? For so many people, it's a, a passion as well and a joy or a hobby or whatever. It just makes surfing that much more personal. And then if you also get good enough and like you can give that joy to somebody else, and it's just such a great history. And, to know about all the people that have come before you and the things they did and all the tricks of the trade and just all the amazing stories that well that come with it in its own. It's just, I hope it never dies. You know, the technology side of it, which is there for the masses and the general public, but there's like always gonna be you and your blank and your surfboard in a shaping room. I was really happy to make a small fish. It was cool to see everyone making the same type of board too and kind of pushing each other for that. I used Ryan and Derek's templates and mixed them together and turned it into a little, I think, 5'3 twin fin with an E-wing. Uh, Derek showed me how to do that and so I'm pretty excited for it.
pretty cool. sick. I like those. Pretty cool. We'll get one of those, huh? What do you usually glass your boards with for the top? Um, it just depends. A lot of times I just do double four, single four. Yeah. If they're gonna be shreddy little boards or fishes, I'll do like six bottom and then like six four deck. My name is Chase Davenport, and I'm the shop manager and shaper at Sunset Shapers. And we've been around for eight years now. So Peter at Surfer got in touch a few months ago um, with a very well-organized plan to glass six boards from Southern California shapers over the course of, I think it was three or four days at that point. And then every time I talked to Peter, he kept on being like, well, maybe it'll be like three and a half days. Maybe we'll, it'll be like at least three and a quarter days. And then by the time it all started, it was 48 hours and we had six boards with glass on to build. We got everything laminated. We got all the fins on last night. And then today was pretty much just me. I mowed all the boards, did lap grinds, final sands, and it was like, what was it, 48 hours and the boards were done? for six of them, so. I've had people ask for like 24 hour turnarounds and like with a single board, like yeah, that's fine. But 48 hours for six boards, I think that's my new record for sure. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah, thanks yeah. a lot, man. Start to try it. Yeah, absolutely. It was amazing that they were able to build those boards on just like constructed racks late at night over the course of like 24 hours. Yeah, I've made an asymmetrical fish. Um, I feel like I kind of don't have a real nice fish in my quiver at the moment. I have really old ones that I've ridden all over the place, but it's nice to have like a wide, short little keel fin board in the quiver. You don't, I don't seem to break them as often, so you can kind of take them as a, as a short board that you don't plan on breaking and they're just really fast and zippy and fun. And the one I made here, I made it asymmetrical, um, partly because it's easier to shape asymmetrical boards because both sides don't have to be the same. <laughs> In a different shaping environment, I wanted to make it as easy on myself as possible. And then also just because I haven't really ridden one that's asym yet, that's real subtly asymmetrical, like one side's just pretty much like a straight rail normal fish where the tail's real parallel and then the other side has a little bit of an in cut in it underneath the heel side to hopefully make it just a little more sensitive and I feel like the, the ones with the in cut outline as you do turns they kind of sit through the lip really nicely like they feel like they lock into a little groove and and you can do a little bit more radical turns on them than just the traditional fish. Some money. We got money in the pinata. Oh, that's a pretty good feeling about this. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Yeah. Well, everyone up here I'd consider like a friend, so 
it's pretty cool on that level where it's just like we don't even really think about it that what we're doing like because it's just natural we all just love surfboards and love shaping them it's so cool yeah to come here and hang with all the people and get to make boards together and see everyone's little flair they put into the way they shape or what comes out of the shaping room um so the board i made at the glass shop is an eight foot egg it's gonna be a three fin I just tried to make something that would work in shoulder to overhead waves. Just wanted to make a like a high performance egg where you could like still have ease of paddle and and then you could do like flowing arcing turns or you could like come up and just straight up and boom bash it hopefully. And I bet you it could tube ride too, so we'll see. really exciting to see the way that everyone was looking at the surfboard because like say Derek and Tyler for example they really focused on the concaves differently than Ryan and I would and so it was cool to see that. Everyone's got such a different take at it and it's really cool to be, be with all these guys and, and see what sort of techniques they use and what ideas they have and just everyone's approach and how it's pass on just through surfing and like creative minds that they're just like, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it myself. It takes a certain type of person to figure it all out and wanna be in this room and with these lights on and make a board. Like, like when you break, bug? like yeah, yeah, like like, uh, like when you break it. Fall camp was fun, J Rad. Yeah. See you next year. Yeah. <laughs> Until next time. Whatever you want.